Please remember to post a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so you can always get my latest travel videos. Good morning from Venice. Today I'm going to uh, take you for a tour of Venice and where I'm going to start is um, my place. So I'm going to just show you that's the entrance to my place right there <laughs> and you can see I had to step aside for this guy that was coming in with the trolley. The little alleyway from my Airbnb takes me out to Calle Longa. This road leads in 100 meters to the Scalzi Bridge. Adjacent to the bridge is the train station. Essentially, I just came about 100 meters, about the length of a football field, hardly, um, to get to this location. And uh, we're going to explore the city a little bit more detail this time, not as rushed, and um, more later. You can see how busy this river is, and this is from the top of that bridge at the Grand Canal. There's a cathedral over there, but uh, you can see there's the water bus, which is called uh, Vaporetto, that was professionally named. And here's, this is the public transit, right? So that's how you get around from this place, which is the train station to St. Mark's Square, where a lot of people are going. The cost of a ticket for the Vaporetto is seven and a half euros, which allows you up to 60 minute ride in one direction only. So you can't travel for 30 minutes and return on the same ticket. You can get a 24 hour pass for the Vaporetto for 20 euros or a 48 hour card for 30 euros, which gives you unlimited rides during that period. You will be paying extra if you have more than a medium sized luggage with you. And you pay seven euros 50 cents to get around. But look at all the vehicles that are around. This is the only way you can get around because you uh, have to basically transport all of the foodstuffs and store stuff and everything else on boats. So it's a very different culture and a very different way of life. Well, I'm going to show you a surprise. I did not know this existed in Venice, so I'm just going to flip the picture and show it to you. So uh, there's a tree. There's actually several trees. This is Campo San Polo. The word campo means field in Italian. This square was originally covered in grass and used for the grazing of livestock. It was paved over in 1493. Campo San Paolo is a popular public space, hosting the Venice Carnival, open-air concerts, and film screenings during the Venice Film Festival. It's an interesting square because it looks like it's more for the people than it is for tourists because there's no restaurant set up in the middle of it. Um, and uh, over there in the distance you can see a church. The San Polo Church is a Gothic Catholic church built in the 15th century, but there's been a church on this site since the 8th century. So this is the first open space I have seen in all of Venice. So I thought I would take a, a video of it. Uh, it's near Calle de Bernardo. And just like yesterday, after a bit of wandering through the streets, find the Rialto Bridge. As I passed this restaurant, I thought I would tell you a little bit more about the food in Venice. Venice is close to the sea, so it has a lot of fresh or salted seafood dishes. One traditional Venetian dish is bigoli in salsa which consists of long thick pasta coated in sauce made of onions and salt cured anchovies or sardines. A second Venetian specialty is risotto al nero de sepia, which is risotto with squid ink. Don't be turned off by the jet black color. This dish is delicious. You can also get this with pasta instead of risotto. I've seen people with tourist maps and they're completely lost. So Google Maps is the only way to go around here. So that's the Rialto Bridge. Something interesting about the Rialto Bridge, there are shops built right on top of the bridge. 
It has been that way since the bridge was built. It has to do with the mercantile nature of Venice. The shops in the Rialto Bridge are high-end shops selling handicraft, leather goods, Venetian masks and Venetian glassware. It's quite expensive as you expect in an area with so much tourism. By the way, a cappuccino costs four euros here, whereas in Milan it cost two euros sixty. More later. Well, I, uh, I'm at the tower trying to go up and uh, they gave me for the 10 euro ticket, uh, I'm obliged to wear a N95 mask, which is this thing. Here we are up in the bell tower. You can see the bell in the background. Venice Panorama, shot one. So see that uh, church in the distance across on it? That's where I came from. Uh, that's the train station. And uh, you can see the maze of streets down below. There's St. Saint, Saint, uh, Mark's Basilica. More later. Here is a look at the domes of St. Mark's Basilica as seen from above. The basilica has over 85,000 square feet of mosaics, done mostly in gold, added over the course of eight centuries. And this is the Doge's Palace from above. The bell tower was originally used as a watchtower to spot approaching enemy boats and to warn the doge. It was also used as a landmark to guide friendly ships into Venice Harbor. We'll see more when we go back down, but I wanted to give you this perspective on Venice from above. Here you can see the harbor behind the doge's palace and you can see lots of boats coming in. I'm gonna to try to explore that area a little later today. And here's the view, and you see another Venetian tower there. Uh, we're going to go down there shortly. There's a view away from the train station, and more of the industrial part of Venice, as you can see in the distance. And I guess that must be St. Mark's Square too. <laughs> I'm going to find out. Uh, and there's another cathedral over there, which I hope to explore some time. Hopefully there's a bridge to go over there. Interestingly, the lineup for the exit is longer than the lineup for the entrance, so I better get into the lineup for the exit soon. The line is moving, so let's see how many people can get into that elevator. Please subscribe, post a like, and hit the notification bell for future videos.